Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. In the previous video, we explained extensively just how powerful Ein's Ul Gown individually is, and explained thoroughly how most of his skills and spells work. However, for today, this video will be dedicated solely for the purpose of listing the patrons of the Tomb of Nazareth. Whether it is the Guardians, the Pleiades, or the Area Guardians, we are going to list all of them, while explaining some of their abilities and skills. What I want from you, though, is to write down who in the comments you think has the power to defeat Ainz, and kill him if they wanted to. Spoiler alert, a lot of them actually can do it. You just have to find out who, and comment their names down below. So before we start, be sure to like, subscribe, and press on that bell icon to keep yourself notified of all our latest new videos. And of course, prepare for a lot of spoilers. Starting off with the constitution of the Tomb of Nazarek, for those who might not know, it has multiple areas and levels, and each area has a guardian, as well as a floor guardian, with the sole purpose of defending the tomb against raiders or enemies. When it was still in the game world, it was a normal thing to attempt and raid a guild. However, even back then, the Tomb of Nazareth was a tough guild to raid due to its powerful patrons and guards. Starting off with the four guardians whom, I might add, are mostly all of them without exception, are able to one-shot Momonga, aka Ainz. Starting off, you have the one and only Succubus Albedo. After the tomb was transported to this new world, these guardians and NPCs received consciousness and became alive with personalities based on their backstories written by the player that created them. And as such, they gained great influence in the tomb affairs due to their high status, but they remain forever loyal to Ainz, and from time to time, miss their creators. Alba, though, even though she is a succubus, is still a virgin. And thanks to the tampering that Ainz did to her personality, she became madly in love with him after arriving to the New World. She is a powerful patron of the tomb and the overseer of the Four Guardians. She has quite an elegant appearance, but beware. Looks can be deceiving behind this facade is a darker-than-black being that hates humans with a grudge and sees them as nothing but a lesser life form. Her weapon is a Bardish, and her armor negates all incoming physical damage. And thanks to her world item, Ginun Gagap, she is able to devastate large areas of land with ease. And that is just a glimpse of her powers, and what she can do. After all, she is the overseer of the Floor Guardians, and arguably the strongest one of them. I gotta say, if she wasn't madly in love with him, because of her setting, she would probably have killed him already. If she wanted to, that is. And the funny thing is that her sister Rubedo is even stronger than her. Up next we have Shaltir Bloodfallen. Or in other words, Chair. She is the floor guardian of the first, second, and third floor of the Tomb of Nazareth, taking on the form of a vampire lolly girl with the highest stats of all the floor guardians and adept in magical and physical combat as seen when she was brainwashed by the slain theocracy. And with Ayn slaying her and resurrecting her, we all know the fight scene from Season 1 and just how hard Ayn's prepared in order to be able to stand a chance against him. That is why, if one of the Guardians wanted to betray him, killing Ainz for them is actually child's play. She is considered, thanks to many reasons I can't get into in this video, the strongest four Guardian ever. Up next we have Arabella, Fiora, and Marabello Fior. They are the twin Guardians of the sixth floor of the Tomb of Nazareth, with Ara being the energetic, extroverted girl taking on the form of a dark elf cross-dressing as a boy, her weapons of choice are the bow and whip, as well as the ability to summon beasts to do her bidding. While Mare is the shy, silent type dark elf that cross-dresses as a girl, even though he is oblivious to what cross-dressing is, Mare, opposed to his sister, is specialized with druidic magic and earth manipulation spells. Little fun fact, Ainz treats those two as if they were his own children. Up next is Demiurge the guardian of the seventh floor of Nazareth, as well as the one in charge of the tomb's defensive systems. He has the form of a demon in a business suit with glasses and a tail. He is quite the tactician and prepared to commit unspeakable atrocities in the name of the tomb of Nazareth. Just to further their goals, he has an okay relationship with the four guardians and patrons of Nazareth. However, his relationship with Sebast can only be called anything but okay due to the influence of their creators whom always were at odds as well. Up next we have Cockatus, and my personal favorite as well, he is the guardian of the fifth floor of the tomb, 
with the form of a humanoid insect possessing the powers of cryokinesis as demonstrated in Season 1 during the battle with the Lizardmen. He possesses multiple swords, spears, halberds, and other kinds of armaments. As a warrior, he is truly noble and respects anyone with a powerful fighting spirit. He is also responsible for the security of the Tomb of Nazarick, and later becomes the one responsible for the Lizardman village that Ainz had him conquer. Cocytus is considered to be the closest to Demiurge, as he takes him to be a friend and a rival as well. Up next we have Victim. He is the pink blob thingy with the stick halo and wings. The guardian of the 8th floor of Nazarick, it speaks Enochian language. It is Nazarick's last line of defense, with its only ability being a self-destruct skill. Despite this, however, it is a humble and modest about its function, believing its sole purpose is to serve the members of the guild, Ainz Ulgau. And finally, Gargantua. It is a stone golem with a height of 30 meters, and unlike the other four guardians, it is not a custom NPC created by the players. Instead, Gargantua was actually an in-game bonus won by the guild. As a result, it was not granted any personality or free will upon coming to the new world. Due to its unique nature, it is noted to be the strongest for Guardian, but due to its inability to react on its own, its strength falls considerably. Next on the menu are the Area Guardians, serving as mini-bosses that guard a specific portion of a floor, which are usually very important locations. Some of them serve as subordinates to the floor Guardians, while others act outside the chain of command. First we have Pandora's Actor, the Area Guardian of Nazarick's Treasury, created by Ainz himself. He is a doppelganger, with an egg head with three holes as a face and is dressed in a military officer's uniform. He can also assume the appearance and abilities of every member of the Ainz Ul Gaon Guild. Because of this, Ainz occasionally calls on him as a stand-in when situations require both Ainz and Momon to be active at the same time. Despite being an area guardian, his abilities rival a floor guardian. Because Ainz created him while going through a Chunibyo phase, he programmed him to act with exaggerated gestures and body language, which now greatly embarrasses him. Despite not getting to spend so much time together, he and Ein share a strong bond with the latter secretly allowing the former to call him father. Up next we have the Five Worst. The Five Worst is an unofficial group composed of the five most disgusting NPCs of Nazarick. Each member has something that is considered the worst, from appearance to occupation. First is Kyohuko. He is the area guardian of the region known as Black Capsule which is filled with carnivorous cockroaches and a member of the five worst holding the title Worst Residence. He has the appearance of a 30 centimeter tall cockroach that walks on its hind legs and wears a small crown, as well as a cloak with a small scepter, giving the impression that he is the king of cockroaches. Despite his appearance, he speaks politely with all the etiquette of a gentleman. Up next we have Gashikuko Chuo, the area guardian of a region known as the Large Hole and a member of five worst, holding the title of worst appearance. It is a parasitic creature using humans as a house. He holds no sympathy for humans and loves using them as his home. He and his family are currently residing inside of Hecarin and Imina, two of the members of Foresight who were defeated and killed during the raid of the Tomb of Nazarick. He is also known as the King of Hungry Proliferum and is a good friend of Cocytus. Up next is Neuronist Painkill. Nazarick's special intelligence investigator in charge of interrogating and torturing prisoners and a member of Five Worst, holding the title Worst Occupation. She is a visibly hideous creature who speaks in a seductive and teasing tone that loses any appeal due to her similarly hideous voice. She also holds affections for Ainz, causing him to avoid her. And finally we have Chakmul. Nazarick's musical instructor in charge of teaching the denizens of Nazarick on how to play musical instruments and a member of Five Worst, holding the title Worst Personality. He views humans as food or toys and requested Ainz for it and commands several greater doppelgangers. Damn, that's one hell of a hideous group if you ask me. They truly deserve the name of the unofficial title of Worst Five. Now for a more pleasant and appealing category, the Pleiades. They are the group of NPCs that are dressed like maids with the exception of Sebas who takes the form of a butler, serving as Nazarick's final line of defense before reaching the final door. Even though by the Nazarick standards the Pleiades may seem weak compared to the New World beings, they are considered the equivalent of legendary beasts when it comes to power. Just like the Florin Area Guardians, upon arriving to the New World they gained sentience and their settings became their own personalities. Thanks to that event taking place they gained much more flexibility when it came to what they can do and not do. They aren't only engaging in combat anymore, they even do chores and clean and tidy up the tomb now. 
each with her own personality and preferences. With that, we'll start with Sebastian, the head butler of Nazarick and overseer of Pleiades. Despite not being a floor guardian, his abilities rival theirs, specializing in unarmed combat. He takes on the form of an elderly gentleman with a neat beard. Unlike the other NPCs, he doesn't hate outsiders and actually has a strong sense of justice like his creator. Because of this, he has a habit of saving those in need, often bringing him in conflict with other NPCs and, on occasion, calling his loyalty to Ainz into question. Up next we have Yuri Alpha, the vice captain but de facto leader of the Pleiades. She is a Duahan who uses a choker to keep her head attached to the rest of her body, causing her to appear to be a human. She specializes in unarmed combat and uses gauntlets in battle. She is programmed to behave like a teacher because her creator was one, and the other Pleiades look up to her like a big sister. She holds a neutral stance towards humans, not disliking them, but not helping them out either. Up next we have Lupus Regina Beta, one of the Pleiades. She's a werewolf in human form and serves as the group's healer. In public, she is a sociable and friendly person who likes to make lewd jokes. However, in reality, she is a psychopath who enjoys using her healing abilities to slowly torture others to death. She is later assigned by Ainz to protect Carne Village. She is the only known NPC to get Ainz angry for not doing her job properly. Up next we have Narborol Gamma, one of the Pleiades. She is a doppelganger. However, because all her levels went into her combat ability, she is permanently in human form. Instead, she is the strongest of the Pleiades, being a magic caster that specializes in lightning spells. She serves as Ainz's companion while under his Momon identity, going by the alias Nabe. However, she despises and looks down on humans, which often causes trouble for him. While as an adventurer, she was given the nickname the Beautiful Princess due to her appearance. Many men propose to her, but most people think she is either Mamone's lover or servant. One of the next Pleiades is CZ2128 Delta. She's an automaton who fights using guns and war knives who widely favors long-range combat. While silent and emotionless, she holds no particular dislike towards humans. She is the only one who knows how to unlock the doors of Nazarick, both secret and public. Up next we have Solution Epsilon, one of the Pleiades. She is a slime that takes on a human form, and she is also an assassin and can absorb people and objects into her body to be stored or devoured. Being a slime, she preys on humans and generally despises and looks down on them. Up next is Entoma Basilisa Zeta. One of the Pleiades, she is an insectoid who disguises herself as a human by wearing a mask and changing her voice. She is an Entomancer, being able to summon fellow insectoids. Being an insectoid, she preys on humans when hungry, but otherwise doesn't consider them worth her attention. She harbors a grudge towards Evil Eye from the adventure group Blue Roses, who defeated and humiliated her. Her wish is to get revenge on Evil Eye by killing her and eating her, and finally taking her voice as payback for destroying hers. She is called the Predator of Family, because she eats Kyohuko's family, sometimes as a snack, making him greatly afraid of her. Up next is Ariel Omega, the leader of Pleiades and the area guardian of the region known as the Cherry Blossom Sanctuary. Due to her dual position, she is unable to lead the group most of the time, causing Yuri Alpha to serve as leader in her stead. She is in charge of Nazarick's teleportation gates. She stated to be the only human NPC in Nazarick. However, most don't consider her human due to her being immortal. Ein seems to trust her a great deal, entrusting her with the staff of Ein's Uo gown whenever he leaves Nazarick. Up next is Pistonia Shortcake Wanko, the head maid of Nazarick. She has the body of a human but the head of a Shetland sheepdog with a vertical scar on her face running down the center of her face. She harbors no dislike towards humans and is even willing to rescue them from her fellow NPC's cruelty. Her class is a high priest who can utilize powerful healing magic and has skills of a high-leveled cleric. She has the ability to use resurrection spells, but they require gold coins, jewelry, or other valuable goods equivalent to it in exchange. Up next is Eclair Eclair Eclair, the assistant butler of Nazarick. He takes on the form of a rockhopper penguin with a superiority complex. He has been programmed with a desire to overthrow Ainz and take over Nazarick as a gag by his creator. The other NPCs are fully aware of this, but they don't care as he poses no threat, and they know it, it is just a part of his settings. Up next is Nigredo, the oldest sister of Alvedo, being created by the same creator. She specializes in information gathering. While she bears some similarity to Alvedo, her face has no skin, resulting in a twisted appearance. Her mind is similarly broken unless a baby doll is given to her. However, while she has a body doll, is actually one of the few NPCs of Nazarick that is genuinely kind-hearted. Despite being polar opposites in appearance and personality, she and Albedo generally get along just fine. 
Up next is Rubido, the younger sister of Albedo and Nigrido. Being created by the same creator, she is the strongest NPC in Nazareth who can overwhelm Ainz himself. Not much is known about her though, but Albedo loves her while Negredo fears her. Ainz is initially cautious of her because she could turn against them someday, but was reassured by Albedo that she is just as loyal as the other NPCs in Nazareth. The NPCs of Nazareth are just too damn powerful to mess with, and even Ainz himself knows just how powerful they are. That is why he is always hiding the fact that he is a human from them lest they finish him off. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I had fun making it for you. I would appreciate it if you guys would smash that like button, subscribe, comment, and press that bell icon to keep yourself notified of all our latest new videos and upcoming projects. And don't forget to comment down below who on this list you think is able to take Ainz down, and how difficult that fight would be for them. Let your imaginations go wild. And as for now, I'll catch you later. See you in the next one.